It's Joe and Lisa with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel on such a beautiful day. Gorgeous blue skies, just absolutely wonderful. Had a couple of days of light rain and man, everything is growing and the air is clean and mm -hmm. lovely day. So we want to talk to you today in case you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Some of you this will interest, some it won't. But I know probably some of you have thought about it a little bit and uh, maybe a fleeting passing thought. But we want to give you our 10 suggestions if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Now, we're no big experts. There's plenty of experts out there on this subject. Um, what they call that guy, Mr. Beast? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of big time <laughs> guys out there. We've been doing this only a short time, but we do have some thoughts on it, and we think it'll be helpful for many people. I want to start with our number one. So decide if you want to try to earn money at this or if you're just doing this to help people. Just decide that up front, because if you just want to help people, that's great. If you take a look at our channel, we're fishing in a very small pond. There's only so many people in the world that are mm -hmm. thinking about moving to Vilcabamba, Ecuador. So, um, you know, we realize that the amount of viewership that we're going to get is much smaller than other channels. We understand that, and that's okay with us. But if you're going to do this to make money, then you need to fish in as big a pond as you can find, like the ocean. <laughs> well, and, and what you choose to go after, if it's you're going after the money, it may not be something you're super passionate about. So you'll have to find a way to be passionate. Um, we chose, because we're retired, to do something we're actually passionate about and enjoy doing. That's absolutely right. So if you're thinking about doing this for the money, my suggestion is um, pick a target audience based on your research. Mm -hmm. Google ads, search words, you know, um, see what the most search words are out there, most search terms, and see what is selling on YouTube, so to speak. Look at the big channels out there and what the topic matter is for them. And I think that you can do all that research, settle in on something that's um, one you're capable of, maybe knowledgeable about, and that you think people are going to watch. Um, so that's our suggestion for that. Um, if you just want to help people, um, maybe you don't need to do all that research and et cetera. The other thing I would say is number two is consider alternate platforms. Yeah, YouTube is not always, it's a big corporation basically, and it's not loyal to you, it doesn't care about you, um, you're just a revenue stream for them. So, um, and people aren't always nice on there. <laughs> yeah, and just understand if, if you're, Google and YouTube are the same thing. It's all of its own together. However, mm -hmm. there's other platforms like Rumble. I mean, we're on Rumble. Mm -hmm. Haven't found a way to make a nickel off of Rumble yet, <laughs> but I'm um, sure some people do. Um, you know, my suggestion, if you want to make money, you know, probably have um, a page where you can sell some stuff and, and divert your traffic to that either PayPal account or Etsy page or whatever it might be. And be diverse because they're coming after money every which way they can. Everybody wants a piece of your pie. So if you make any of the, anything at all, they're going to want a piece. So definitely diversify and find different ways. There's a lot mm -hmm. of very creative people out there that actually make money. Yeah, if you're relying on Google AdSense um, for an income, understand that Google can take that away. Oh, yeah. That quick. Um, we know there's some creators out there who um, Google just stopped all their ad revenue, you know, without any proof that they've done anything wrong. So that's a pretty tough break when 90% of your income goes away. Well, and if they don't like what you're presenting, they can just, I mean, you could have already gone through the phases of transitioning to a, a job as a creator. You quit your real job, and then now you're a full-time creator, and basically, they just shut you off. So basically, you just got fired, and you don't even know why. Yes, and, and you don't have a lot of recourse either. No, you don't. <laughs> So I would suggest look at alternate platforms in addition to or instead of. That's up to you completely. Um, we're not suggesting not to use YouTube. No. But we are suggesting, like Lisa said, to be diverse. Don't, don't put your eggs all in one basket. Spread them around. 
All right, number three, learn to toughen up. Oh, yeah, that's the big one. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, they cannot accept the negative input that they're going to receive. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to get mean and nasty comments from time to time. And you're going to get crazy, them. insane comments. Yeah, some stuff. There's a lot of weird people in this world. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're going you to have to get really good at just going, eh, this is not about me. They have their own problems, their own things going on, and learn to use that delete key. Yeah, we don't and, delete uh, everybody, but, you know, because everybody has a different opinion, and that's fine. Just don't be ugly about it. Yeah, I had two people from two different countries fighting <laughs> on our, our YouTube channel one time, and I gave them both a pretty good chance. And I finally had to silence both of them because mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to be a platform where people could come on and argue with each other. Yeah. There's plenty of other platforms for that. We're trying to be helpful. That's not helpful to anybody. No. So, yeah, I'd say you got to learn to toughen up. Um, you know, I, I, there's, a, there's a person who, um, and, and I've about narrowed down what it is, who it is, but every video, they'll give me one of those. <laughs> They're the only one. There's no other thumbs downs. And mm. so they'll give one of those. And, um, you know, I mean, there's something going on in this person's life that's causing them the need to do that. I probably silenced them or something, and so they get on there and, and do that kind of thing. Well, you know what? They want to make me as miserable as they are. I don't care. Yeah, that's I, where you got to go, though, is you can't drown in the, the negative comments. We get, I would say, so many beautiful, beautiful, wonderful comments from people. Really very uplifting. The yeah. few that you get that are negative, let them go. Yeah, 99% of our comments are just wonderful. Um, and, you know, and sometimes you guys call me on something and I'll go research it and come back and go, hey, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, this did change in the law or that happened or this happened. Um, we don't mind that. We love that. Um, but unconstructive stuff is... Yeah, yeah. The keyboard warriors, I think. Yeah, yeah. They hide behind the keyboard and just want to be mean. So learn to just don't care. Move on from toxic Move people on. and don't spend any time with them. Don't mm -hmm. give them an audience and, um, and your life will be wonderful. That's right. All right. Number four, really suggest watching other creators' channels. Learn as much as you can about starting a channel on YouTube by watching these other creators. Mm -hmm. We had no guidance. We had nobody to show us nothing. We kind of muddled our way through. You know, I... I watch them and I take them seriously sometimes and then I watch the some of the videos we watch and it's like they don't follow any of the rules but they have a really really good following yeah it's I mean sometimes it's just hit or miss it's just weird how they do it yeah but watch these other channels because you'll see some things that they're doing mm. um, that are successful and you're gonna see some things that are suggested Everybody jumps on that bandwagon, but it's not necessarily helping their channel. No. I would uh, use the KISS method. Uh, keep it simple, stupid to start with. Uh. Um, you know, and just make it as simple as you can um, and see what's working and what's not. So watch these channels. And if you're going to select a hero on YouTube, be very careful who your heroes are. Mm. Ask yourself, okay. I want to model myself after this creator. Um, what are their redeeming qualities? What is it about them that I want people to see in me? Well, and, and, and it's not just the person, it's the channel and it's what they present. I mean, it's easy to get views um, in different ways, but is that really what you want to do? Is that really what you want to be, you know, representing yourself as? It's your choice. You know, we see uh, TikTok videos. I don't really watch TikTok, but um, there are TikTok videos that wind up on YouTube as shorts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, any female can parade around out there with not wearing much clothes and put up videos and gets views. I don't have a lot of respect for that. And I think most of the world doesn't either. Um, so probably those aren't the kind of people I would model after by any means. And maybe I would suggest you wouldn't either. Um, but I would say, 
you got to be yourself, both on and off the screen. You can't be two different people, be one person in your videos and another person in public. That's going to show up and that's going to come back to bite you. Yeah, I would say there's a lot of um, videos out there or there's a lot of channels and they just have a super dynamic personality. If that's not you, you're not gonna pull that off on camera. So you, you have to pick and choose. And there's a lot of them out there that are um, full of clickbait, which is annoying for me. And then there's a lot of them that all they promote is gloom and doom. They will get views, but is, yeah. again, is that where you wanna be? Exactly. So, you know, if, if you're not real dynamic on screen, you can learn to be more dynamic. We're not suggesting you be someone other than who you are mm -mm. when we do suggest that. Um, there's some things you can do to be more upbeat, more up-tempo, um, but be who you are and, and let that shine. Mm -hmm. All right. So number five is consider a faceless channel. So that kind of rides right on the heels of what we just said. <laughs> so let's just say you're more of an introvert, you're not that outgoing or, um, you know, you're a little uncomfortable. You know, a faceless channel works great. There's a lot of them out there. All you see is a person's hands while they're demonstrating something, while their cooking channels can be that way. Um, these, uh, a lot of crafty type channels are that mm -hmm. way. There's a lot of faceless things you can do. You don't even have to use your voice anymore because They've got AI voiceovers. Um, no one yeah. will even know it's you. And that is important for a lot of people, especially if you don't like the public notoriety. Um, Lisa and I walk down the street in Vilcabamba or we go to the Mercado, and there's always somebody walking up to us saying, hey, I watch your videos, mm -hmm. you know. And, and we don't mind it, we like it because we like to meet new people. I met some new people on Saturday at the market. Yesterday, yeah. yeah. I was standing over by the coffee coffee lady picking up some peanut butter and uh, some people were standing there like, huh, is that her? <laughs> yep, that's her. <laughs> now, that may make you uncomfortable, so that's where a faceless channel would be good for you. For us, we don't mind. Um, like I said, we enjoy meeting new people, enjoy hearing their stories, et cetera, and how they got to Ecuador. Mm. Uh, what's really kind of cool is we go to Loja now in the big city. <laughs> we walk down the street and we see Ecuadorians stop and stare at us. And they have that recognition, that eye contact going on. You can tell they want to say something, but they're a little too timid. Mm -hmm. It's because they recognize us from YouTube. Now, it makes me very happy because I know they're watching Spanish subtitles. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to uh, maybe say hi because they're worried we don't speak enough Spanish. We do. Mm -hmm. You can stop us and say hi. We speak enough Spanish that we'll have a great conversation. But I love that because I love the Ecuadorian engagement in what we're doing. Definitely. I mean, as a foreigner to a country, um, being accepted at that level for us is, is a huge win. Okay, number six. So remember, subscriber count is not an indication of your self-worth. Just because you're not getting new subscribers don't let that affect you personally, negatively. Always look at it as I need to look at my videos. Do I need to do a better job communicating? Do I need to position my videos differently, different topic matter? Um, sometimes you just get a dud when you release a video. I've had videos with really good um, views on them, but I didn't get any new subscribers from them. And, and that's okay. Um, some people are just not going to subscribe. Uh, well, and sometimes it has nothing to do with you. Sometimes right. it's a YouTube algorithm working against you. Maybe they don't like your content. Maybe they just want somebody else to be ahead of you. You don't have any idea what's going on behind that once you, once you publish it. I listen to the so-called experts talk about the algorithm and how to you know, how to get YouTube to recommend your videos more. And you know what I'm convinced of? None of them really know for sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they all have an opinion about it, but I'm not sure any of them are spot on. But I, I you know, listen to them. You, you know, they have something to say. It's worth listening to. You, all, but, you can always get an ounce of information out of everybody. Absolutely. But don't take it personally if your mm. subscriber count doesn't just 
rock it off. I know you're going to see people on YouTube who say, I got monetized in 30 days and yada, 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 and here's how you can too. And well, and there's a lot of people that pay people um, to help boost their numbers, and that may help you, and then again, it may get you demonetized. I would not recommend that. I would not recommend buying subscribers. There's nothing wrong with emailing your friends and family and saying, hey, can you uh, subscribe to my channel? I'm trying to get monetized. Mm -hmm. I, that's perfectly fine. In fact, I have a mailing list. I email people as soon as a new video comes up. Um, as soon as it's uh, released, I send out my email that's, hey, there's a new video up. Just because some people don't want to hit that notification bell on there, or they don't mm -hmm. know about it, and the email prompts them to go ahead and watch the video. Don't feel bad about doing that. That's perfectly normal. It's perfectly allowed. That's great. Um, I don't think you're being a problem. I always put in the um, title box, new video up, so they know what the email's about. If they don't want to read it, they don't have to. Yeah. The one thing that's frowned upon is don't go to someone else's channel and try to promote your channel. Yeah. That's really not acceptable. Yeah, I'll, I'll silence you off our channel in a heartbeat if you do that. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of people that do that, trying to tap into somebody else's audience. And um, really, that's against the rules. I think, you know, at some point during your video, and there's a lot of talk in the beginning, whether you should in the beginning ask for subscribers or wait till the end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think Nate out there does a good job of this. He says, you know, when you haven't even seen 10, seen 10 seconds of someone's video and you're already asking them to subscribe, why would they subscribe? They haven't even watched your video yet. So I like to see that somewhere else in the video, preferably at the end or, you know, along at least a few minutes into it. But don't feel bad about asking for, some, for the audience to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and most of all, share your videos. Y'all are going to share our video, right? <laughs> Share this video. And the reason we want you to share is because maybe it benefits somebody else. Yeah, we have um, a friend in town, and he was thinking about, you know, his passion. What should he do? How can he get pictures out to people? And we suggested YouTube. And he's like, oh, I don't know. You know, YouTube, all the problems. But YouTube, Google, it's all the same. He's using Google so uh, and Gmail. But Everything has a purpose, and it's what value you put on that purpose that really matters. Yeah. Well, I say, you know, make the best video that you can. Mm -hmm. um, put it out there. Be an honest critic of your own work and um, ask yourself constantly, how can I improve my video? How can I make it more interesting? Above all, you really need to know you're a storyteller, and you have to learn to tell your story. And you're doing it with video, you're doing it, of course, with audio. Um, but some people have audioless videos. Oh, yeah. And tell a great story. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you look at yourself as a, as a storyteller and an artist for sure. All right, number seven. Oh, we're not a gear channel. I'm going to talk about some gear today. But number seven is don't get bogged down in the new gear syndrome. Um, That's it's really real important, really important. You can get on here and spend a bunch of money if you want. Um, you can spend a bunch of money on software, a bunch of money on equipment. Um, I'd say shoot your videos with a cell phone or a cheap camera to get started. And um, don't worry about 4K. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to tell you what we're filming this video in today. I'm going to let you guess. All right. So um, all that technical stuff, don't worry about it. Just get the best video that you can, the best picture. Um, and the most important thing, though, I, I think is, and this is number eight, do get the best quality microphone you can afford. The microphones really make a big difference. Big difference. We recorded from um, my little Poco cell phone in the beginning. Yep. And uh, we used this for a long time. I will tell you that the audio right off the cell phone is not very good. Uh, do not rely on that. So I bought some lavalier mics that you plug into it. We couldn't adjust the gain going into the video. 
so that it was overpowering the video constantly. And that was a problem. And people were going, don't shout. And well, we're not shouting. We're talking in normal voices. I haven't figured out a, a good way to make that happen. So when we started doing a lot better videos is when we bought these DJI mics. Gosh, can't say enough good about these mics. Um, DJI has these wireless mics at $320 on Amazon. Be the best $320 you ever spend. We see some people out there with really good viewership, but some really bad, bad audio. And I won't watch bad audio for a second. But you can't hear most of it. It's yeah, and it's the wind and the other noise. I will say the dead cats on these are really good. They keep, um, they pick up the volume here with us talking. But a lot of the other things on the property that are going on, you don't necessarily hear. Yeah, it won't stop the dog barking. No. <laughs> but it stops almost all the wind noise. The little dead cats are excellent. They really are. Um, so these come with a clip on them that you can clip them on your shirt or they have a little magnet on the back. I'll put a link in the description box so you can go on Amazon and look at them. These are awesome. Um, man, I tell you, shotgun mics are good if all you're ever gonna do is an interview like this, mm -hmm. but the DJI mics are so universal. I will tell you that um, we've come up a situation where we have three or more people in the interview and so the DJI mic will pick up the person sitting next to you but to really get, get at it you want to buy one of these Yellowway lavalier systems and I'll put the, all that in the description box. Um, my good friend at Flynn's on the fly, Matthew Flynn, he uh, turned me on to this and that's what we did their interview with. Matthew happened to have them there. So I ordered these from Amazon, and the cool thing is, um, you know, they got really long cords. There's two lavalier mics in here, comes with two of them, and it comes with this Y connector. You see, here's two mics. That Y connector plugs right into my input on the DJI uh, mic right here. So that gives me the opportunity to have four people minimum in the video without... Um, you know, sacrifice any sound quality. Mm -hmm. These mics are awesome, and they have little, little foamy on them that helps with the wind noise. Yeah. So for if you're interviewing multiple people, definitely get one of these Yellowways. Now they're not real cheap, but I want to say they're in that forty, fifty dollar range. But I'll, I'll put the link on there, and you can see for yourself. Highly recommend <laughs> these bad boys if you're going to be doing a lot of interviews. Yeah, we don't get any credit or monetary value from sharing the the tools we use no so we're we're too small in the pond and just so you know i'll put the link for this up there too we're filming right now on a nikon uh, z30 or z30 depending on where you live mm -hmm. so we're filming on the z30 which is a hybrid camera for video and photos uh, we take a lot of our photos with it and um yeah it's been good it does 4k um i've been watching a lot of videos on 4k lately and a lot of my own experiences, and I would say, yeah, 4K is not all it's cracked up to be for YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of people coming out against it, but um, and there's a lot of people going back to the cell phones. So it just depends on what you truly need, not what you want, because you are uh, having a new hobby, and you do like to spend on hobbies. But um, what do you truly need, and what are you going to use it for? So don't be a gearhead, but those are our suggestions about gear and what we like about our gear. Um, we've made some really tough videos in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I should go back and just erase them. My suggestion is make a couple of videos to get started with the intent of never letting anybody see them on YouTube, at least with the intent of never loading them to YouTube. Maybe have some friends review them, um, but I would suggest making a couple of videos that you can then learn from, go back and look at and go, hmm, I need to make these changes, that change. Um, the the picture's not very clear, the sound's not very good. So make some, you know, full length videos and see what you think. Okay, number nine, believe you are an artist. Um, if you are a painter, you're going to do some time learning your craft, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna spend some time learning how to draw, learning how to paint some time going to art class, um, paint the best painting that you can. If you're a photographer, you have to learn to take the best picture you can. 
Lisa and I started a photo club here in Vilcabamba, and I'll just tell you, um, our photography club, this was a for my own benefit because I want to learn and learn from other people. So we as a group are learning together. Mm -hmm. Some people in the group are more experienced than others. Some are all cell phone photography people, which is just fine. We're loving it so far. It's a lot, a lot of fun. So as a content creator, you have to learn your craft to the best of your ability and make that video the best art that you can. Um, again, make a couple of videos, look at them real objectively. Yeah, and that's part of uh, figuring out, going back to number one, what are you doing it for? Is this a passion for you? Is it something, if it's a passion, you're going to want to improve and make it better. If it's not your passion, um, you may burn out. I, um, I make these art videos, I call them, mm. um, where we go to artists and interview artists or we take pictures of murals in different towns and post them up. I'm going to be real. I make those for me. They are not the most viewed videos we have out there. Mm -mm. Some people absolutely love them and uh, get great comments on them. Um, many people comment on the music. And that's one of the things I want to tell you about your art here. If you're a good storyteller, and if you're going to use music, you're going to need to understand that music is going to evoke emotion. And you want that to bring out the proper emotion for your video. Music's got to be right. Spend time picking the right music. Spend time doing the right B-roll. And B-roll is extra footage that you add to the main video. So spend time collecting those things that you need, those other sorts of media that's going to collectively make your video stronger and a lot more interesting to watch. Okay, number 10. Use easy to use video editing software. There is so much out there that is really top-notch quality software for free. Yeah. You know, I mean, Final Cut Pro and all this stuff, that's all great stuff, don't get me wrong. They're expensive. Um, if I'm going to use Pro software, it's going to be DaVinci Resolve. And the reason is it's free. You can buy the free version or get the free version and um, you don't need to buy anything. And it is feature packed. It is way too much for a newbie, um, for a neophyte. It is um, too much to start with. I've been working with it for a year now. I still barely understand it. Um, I'm working real hard at it, but. Yeah, it's got so many layers of intricacy. It's like I mean, five different software packages. Yeah, it, it's really robust and you almost have to be an expert in every area. So it's not super user friendly. I mean, it's great, but it's not always super user friendly. There are a lot of them out there that are a lot easier to use. And I will say DaVinci does a wonderful job. They're actually owned by the Black Magic Company, makes cameras and things. Mm -hmm. um, they have their own set of training videos on their software and they're really good videos. Um, they do a marvelous job at that. But I think something that's much easier to learn would be CapCut. And CapCut is uh, made by the people who own TikTok, from what yeah. I understand. So, uh, well, we don't TikTok, but we like CapCut. <laughs> Easy to learn. Um, there's lots of training videos out there available for it, put out by creators. Um, there's one guy named Luca B. I like a lot of his, uh, his videos. So, um, CapCut's free. You can mm -hmm. use it on desktop, on Mac, on your cell phone. Doesn't matter. You don't it's, have to have a lot of storage space, which no, it's with some of these four bigger ones. Or less. Yeah, these bigger ones. You have to have such a large computer to even run them. Yeah, DaVinci Resolve, you got to have 16 meg to make that puppy run properly. Ooh. And um, that's a lot of memory. Um, and it takes a lot of resources. Is it better? Yeah. Well, I would say but, it's different. It's better depending on what you're doing. If you're making a movie or if you're making um, movies for YouTube even, that's probably a better way to go. But if you're making videos like we make, you don't necessarily have to have that much. I don't know, CapCut's got some pretty cool features and they're upgrading it all the time. Yeah. 
So I would highly recommend CapCut. I mean, there's some people out there that like Microsoft Movie Maker and what is it? Well, the, I think the thing is, use anything that works for you. If you try all the free ones, and some are just going to be naturally easier for you to use, then that's the right one for you. But I think if you're going to try a free one, try one that has lots of training videos available mm -hmm. um, so that you can learn how to use their package. Um, there's a lot of buzzwords in the beginning that you'll have to get used to and understand what they're saying, but that'll happen. Now, here's the cool thing. You can always upgrade later if you decide you sure. want to go on to something more intense. Um, it's out there. Sure, sure. So that's our 10 suggestions. I hope that um, they were helpful. And if they were, give us a thumbs up and share the video. Ciao for now.